Hello and welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today we have another ransomware sample. Yay! Um, but we will not talk about ransomware today. It's actually about the an anti-debugging trick that this sample just happens to use. So um, it's more about this trick, how it works, and how you can um, manually defeat it. Um, so let's check out the sample with Ollie. Okay, there it is. Now, um, there is another video by Xylitol about the very same sample where he unpacks it. I will not show you the unpacking. If you want to see that, just, uh, I will link the video below. Um, check it out. Uh, but I will show you an anti-debugging trick that um, Xylitol uses a Phantom plugin, which can defeat this trick. So if you use this plugin, disable it um, if you want to uh, do the same as I'm doing now. So it's generally a good idea to turn off the plugins from time to time. If you want to learn more about uh, uh, why debugging tricks work and how you can um, how you can solve this without plugins. Uh, helps to build up your skills and some, there's not a plugin for everything. Um, okay, we will search for all intermodular calls and I already set a breakpoint here. That's the get prog address and uh, that together with load library A is often used to solve the imports, uh, to resolve the imports of the pack file. So um, it retrieves the addresses for functions that the pack file needs and that's why we set a breakpoint here and we will just go and run. And here you can see which um, function is um, gathered here. So, and now we are at the set unhandled exception filter function. And if you press um, run F9 again, the sample will just terminate. So that's the anti-debugging trick. It terminates if it detects that you debug it. Um, okay, let's do this again. To the same point, set unhandled exception filter. Now, what does this actually do? Um, this function. This function will, well, and that's the documentation of it. I really recommend that you read up on the MSDN doc documentation if you um, learn about it. So, if an exception occurs in a process that is not being debugged, that's the very important here, um, and the exception makes it to the unhandled exception filter, that means the exception is not handled otherwise, that filter will call the exception filter function specified by top-level exception filter. So that's the parameter you give to this set unhandled exception filter and the parameter is a pointer to function for well with your own code so and this function is only called if the process is not being debugged so you can basically put everything important in here and it will only be executed if the process is not being debugged well great um, so who checks if the process is being debugged? That's this unhandled exception filter function without the set. So in this function, there's a check about the current process and whether it's being debugged or not, and whether to um, go to this function or not. And also, usually, if you do not um, set this, um, Windows will display a message but if you set this it will call this function instead if the process is not being debugged. All right um, that's the function. Good. Now that means uh, since the check is in unhandled exception filter we will go there and you press control G control G you enter unhandled exception folder and OK. And you get to the start of this function. Set a breakpoint, run there. And remove the breakpoint again. Might make some troubles if you don't. 
Dan moet ik uh, steppen met this. Uh, let's get current process. Uh, get current process returns a handle, a pseudo handle. And here it is. Retrieves a pseudo handle for the current process. And the pseudo handle is a special constant which is currently minus one. So they say currently, it might change in the future. And it's interpreted as the current process handle. But for compatibility with future operating system, it is best to call get current process instead of setting hard coding this minus one yourself. So that's the actual, um, yeah, the only value of that function is to return minus one. Okay. Yeah, a pseudo handle means that's not an actual address. So it's just a constant that means something. So that's what, so we expect ex to turn to minus one. Um, and that's what happens here. If you're confused right now, that's the two's complement and the two's, I will, I will set a link below to explain the two's complement. Um, the two's complement and this means minus one in this context. Okay, we zero it out. Why? Uh, here's a call to um, query information process that retrieves the process information of the current process. It uses uh, here's the push ex. Yeah? It pushes uh, the current handle, and um, so that means it will. I will show you the function here. Here it is. <coughs> well, that's not the same as nt, but okay. <laughs> Um, but it uses the process handle to return information about the current process. And uh, one information of that is whether the process is being debugged or not. That means if you set this to zero instead of minus one, it will check the process zero and that's not being debugged. So in that case, um, the function will decide that, that there is no debugger attached. Okay, let's try this. We will now um, just press run. And indeed, at this point, uh, last time, the program terminated and it didn't do that this time. So now we can actually get to the point where we unpack the file. Uh, I told you I won't show you that, but here's the out here decompress buffer um, function that's very often used, packed files, and uh, yeah, I recommend if you want to unpack it, show the video, uh, look into the video of school tool, and that's already it for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.